Do you know what's one thing that I kind of miss? Celebrity cartoons. You know, shows starring famous characters and celebrities from movies and TV. These were really popular in the 80s and 90s. Though there are some examples before then. I still can't believe there was a Muhammad Ali cartoon. However, they seemed to fade away when the 2000s rolled in, and we didn't see much like them anymore. The most recent examples I can think of are Jackie Chan Adventures and Mike Tyson Mysteries, though that one was meant to be more of a joke. I had wondered why we hadn't seen many shows like this in a while, but then I remembered what era we're living in and what counts as a celebrity nowadays, and I don't think anyone wants someone like Jake Paul or Ninja having their own animated series. They're not good role models like Mr. T was. There were basically two types of shows like this, the more action-based ones, and the more fun comedic ones which seemed to be more popular in the 90s, though not all of them were memorable or good, but I think we kind of know that already. Probably the most famous examples of this were Bobby's World, created by comedian Howie Mandel, and the subject of today's review. Life with Louie was an animated series that lasted for four seasons and originally aired on Fox Kids between December of 1994 and March of 1998. The show was created based on the stand-up routines of comedian Louie Anderson, who sadly passed away in January of 2022. But it didn't get me thinking of the show again and how nobody ever really talks about it. I mean, it was beloved during its time, but it's not brought up incessantly by 90s kids like Bobby's World is. Remember Bobby's World? It was a good show! You're too young to remember. It was a good show! Well, I guess we'll see how well it holds up. Here's Life with Louie. So the show is about a pint-sized eight-year-old Louie and his life growing up in Midwestern America during the 1960s, where he lives in a big house with his parents and his many brothers and sisters, all supported by a single income which by today's standards is absurd. Louie, of course, is voiced by Louie Anderson. What are you so excited about? You don't even go to school. Though he does have a lot of siblings, the one we see the most is his little brother Tommy, who tags along sometimes. There's his mom, Aura, who mostly plays the role of nurturing mom, who's usually the voice of reason, but she's also shown to be the cool mom every once in a while. Then there's his dad, Andy, a blue-collar World War II veteran. He kind of falls into that category of goofy but well-meaning sitcom dads, which is an overrated trope even to this day, but he is one of the funniest things in the show, mostly because he's also voiced by Louis Anderson. Too early for you. Ah, you kid. When I was in a war, I was having my afternoon tea at four in the morning. Well, where are we supposed to sit? What are you talking about? There's plenty of room! Ever been in a foxhole? I like that despite his boastfulness and tough exterior, they portray him as being a good person who genuinely cares about his family and other people. On a side note, do you think it was strange Louis Anderson voiced his dad acting opposite what is essentially his mom? You think that ever felt weird? So the show wasn't really like a lot of other shows at the time, because it was mostly just about everyday life. And while Bobby's World was similar, the big difference is that show was about a kid using his imagination to make sense of the world around him. But Life with Louie took situations head-on and tried to stay grounded in reality. Or at least close to reality. I mean, most kids probably had to take care of their first pet fish at some point, but I doubt it grew huge and started talking. I'm hungry, Lou. Give me a jelly donut, would you, Lou? I'm wasting away here. And if it did, you need to seek help. But mostly it was about those fun, typical childhood tropes that I think most kids can relate to, such as family road trips, getting excited for a snow day, getting excited for summer break, being scared of getting a shot at the doctors, being scared of the basement, getting bullied because you were the fat kid, being awkward in gym class because you were the fat kid, not telling the girl you like how you feel about her because maybe you don't think you deserve her because you were the fat kid. What, what are you coming back to me for? I, I don't know anything about any of that, okay? Get back to the show! The show really does capture a lot of aspects of childhood, like having passive creative interests, like music, filmmaking, and there's even an episode where Louis has interest in becoming a stand-up comic, which is very meta. All that was missing was Louis wanting to take martial arts or something. Though I did find it funny we didn't see much of Louis's other siblings. 
They don't even eat dinner together, and when they're on screen, their faces are covered sometimes, and sometimes they're not. Why, though? They're also kind of jerks to Louie. In one episode, their mom gets sick, and Louie was left to take care of the house by himself. Hey, Laura, you know how to make eggs. Well, how should I know? Ask Mom. She's sleeping. I just need to know how to make a couple of eggs. Hey, do I look like a chicken to you? Twerp. Danny! Look what you did! Sorry, kid. Hey, Mom needs a lunch now. Why don't you make it? I'm a little busy here. Because I've got a baseball game, Squirt. My teammates need me. Hey, mm. Shorty. Mom needs some tissue. Well, why don't you get it for her, Carol? I'm working on my Mother's Day gift. I know a present she might like. Really? What? A box of tissue. Now snap to it. Oh, yeah. They're definitely boomers. On a more technical level, the show looked good overall and had some good animation. I also like that the characters were seen wearing different clothes. Sometimes it would just be a change in color and ultimately it doesn't really affect anything, but it's a nice detail you don't often see in cartoons. Though some of the voices were not great. Not any of the main cast, but some of the incidental characters sounded very phoned in. Hey, congratulations. Thanks. But I don't know how I'm ever going to tell my dad I don't want to play pro ball. You don't? No. I want to be a flutist. Eh, no need to do another take. That was perfect. Also, despite taking place in the 60s, it doesn't really feel like it did. For all we know, this could have just been the 90s. Louie has a bully named Glenn who just seems to be a typical bully you'd see in a lot of stuff at the time. Louie and Jeannie sitting in a tree. K-I-S. K-I-S. Q U. Want a dictionary? That's gonna cost you, Loogie. He also uses the word Loogie, which threw me off because I mostly associate that word with the 80s and 90s. But I actually looked it up and apparently it did originate in the 60s. I can't believe I researched this, but fact of the day, I guess. Though there were a few times where they referenced something that hadn't happened yet. Doesn't he remind you of someone... Batman? No. The kid from Fat Albert? Um, actually, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids didn't premiere until 1962. And even the original TV special, Hey 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 It's Fat Albert, didn't premiere until 1969, long before this show is supposed to take place. Come on, writers of Life with Louie, get it together. Also, this was the 1960s, you know, when the Vietnam War was happening. A major world-changing event that affected American society, and not a single mention of it. I realize this has nothing to do with the show overall, it doesn't really affect anything, but I'm still gonna bring it up and be mad about it for some reason. We'll be right back! Now back to our show! Whoa, whoa. So the show premiered with a Christmas special that served as the pilot episode. In this one, the Andersons try to do something nice for an old lady that lives across the street, so they surprise her by decorating her house for Christmas, with all the comedic shenanigans you'd expect from that. But then they find out why her house wasn't decorated. Later we realized why Mrs. Stillman didn't put up Christmas decorations. She was Jewish. Whoops. Good thing Twitter wasn't a thing yet. Well, it seems she liked the gesture enough to leave the lights up, but what I find funny is that this becomes a running gag in a few episodes. When are you going to take down my Christmas lights? What's the rush? Well, Christmas was nine months ago. What's that? Yes, Dina. I'll remind him about the Christmas lights. Again. On a more heartwarming note, like a lot of good shows, there was more than one Christmas episode. In the episode Family Portrait, Louie finds out one of his friends is the oldest kid living in an orphanage. So his family invites him over for Christmas. Yeah, there's a lot of nice wholesome stuff in this show. In the episode Dad Gets Canned, Andy loses his job and the family has to do what they can to get by. Hey Anderson, you selling that junk heat for parts? <laughs> Don't hold me back, Louie. I've got no flip. I'm going back to Normandy! Then it's revealed that he was fired for letting a co-worker leave early to be with his wife when she was having a baby. Mom, is that why Dad got fired? Well, after 11 children, your father knows how important it is for a dad to be there. When the rest of his co-workers find out what happened, they protest until he gets rehired. Today's workers could learn a thing or two from this episode. 
Most of the episodes were good, though in my opinion the most disappointing one has got to be Louie's Harrowing Halloween. Now, in my opinion, the Halloween episode of a TV show should be regarded among the best episodes, because, well, it's Halloween. But the episode focuses mostly on Louie stealing a piece of candy from a grocery store and feeling guilty about it. It does fit with the show overall, but it feels like Halloween was just kind of wedged into this one. Because, candy, I guess. What I find weird, though, is how obsessed the store owner is with finding out that Louie stole. Tell me something, Mr. Anderson. If I searched your pockets right now, what would I find? A lawsuit? Tomorrow morning, I'm having the whole store audited. How uh, accurate is this audit? Very. If a single piece of candy left this store unpaid for, I'll know it. You will? And I'll know whose parents to call. Okay, look, I know he did something wrong, but it's just a piece of candy. It's not like he stole a lobster or a rack of ribs or something. I'm pretty sure your store is going to survive the loss. In the episode, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Bed, the Andersons get some new neighbors and they start a cliched sitcom feud over an argument that probably hasn't aged well. You catch Bob Hope last night on the tube. Ah! Ah! Nah, I don't like him. What? Well, I just don't think he's funny. Who do you like, Hackett, Youngman? Eh, those guys are washed up. Well, if you really want to know, I prefer Milton Berle. He likes Milton Berle. That guy wears a dress. <laughs> That's why it's funny. <laughs> is, uh, is anyone else feeling kind of sweaty? <laughs> also, this argument they have just sounds like something you'd hear on social media nowadays. Uh, come on, Jensen. I know he's not wearing a dress or anything, but that is funny! Not to me. What do you mean, not to you? Bob Hope spells funny! It just doesn't appeal to me. What? What do you know? You pathologists, you're all the same. No sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, Bob Hope stands. You know, it's amazing how everything has changed, and yet nothing has changed. So anyway, Andy decides to build a wall around their house. You know, the rational thing to do. But then the town gets flooded and the wall keeps out the water, so the other neighbors have to take refuge there. They got flooded out of their house and I invited them to come and stay with us. What do I look like, Noah? Okay, I don't know why, but that line, when I first heard it as a kid watching this show, it nearly killed me. Like, I was cracking up. I was on the floor laughing. I must have been something in the delivery, but at the time, it was like the funniest thing I'd ever heard in my life. Well, despite some more shenanigans and Andy's protests, needless to say, things work out in the end. In the episode, for Pete's sake, Louie befriends a homeless man who starts taking advantage of his kindness. But then we start to learn about how he lost his job and his family and eventually wound up on the street. Twelve years I worked there, and then the company cut back. I lost my job. Hit the street and interviewed for every job I could find. After all, I had a family to support. So, what happened? A whole lot of rejection. So I stopped looking. I lost my house. I lost my savings. Lost my family. This show did get very real and heavy a lot of times. Which brings us to the episode that I and probably a lot of people who watch this show remember most. The Thank You Note. In this episode, Louie gets a sweater from his grandma, which he doesn't really like very much, but his mother insists that he send her a thank you note anyway. But of course, he procrastinates on writing the note, and then Louie gets the news that his grandmother has passed away. And I should mention that she wasn't an off-screen character. She appeared in several episodes before this, so viewers of the show knew who she was. And on top of that, I learned that this episode was made in response to her voice actor, Mary Wicks, passing away. I've always had a lot of respect for a kid's show that talks about death. There aren't many good examples of it either. Probably because it is such a delicate subject. I think this show does a good job with it. They keep it fun and lighthearted like the show normally is, but occasionally will cut back to somebody grieving to show that they are taking this seriously. Most of the episode revolves around Louis thinking his grandma has gone somewhere where he can still send his note. So he goes around talking to people of different religious beliefs to get their perspective, but ultimately not getting a solid answer. Cleveland. The whole religion revolves around trying to get back to Cleveland. And 
Interesting. It's a small religion, but it has its advantages. Like what? Well, for one, Cleveland's got a zip code. About as good as any other explanation. In the end, Louie's mom tells him that even though he didn't get to send his note, his grandma knew that he loved her. But this episode is a reminder to let the people in your life know how much you appreciate them. Because tomorrow, they could be gone. Wow, that's a heavy note to end on. Life with Louie may not be one of the best shows ever, but it is a very good show. At the time, there weren't a lot of shows like this. It may not be Batman punching bad guys or going on treasure hunts with Uncle Scrooge, but a show like this was a nice little break in between. It portrayed real situations and taught you how to be a good person while still managing to be funny and entertaining. Though while at the time it was pretty popular and even won many awards, not much else came of the show. There were many promotions for it and fast food toys, but not from places you'd expect like McDonald's. Instead, they were from places like Dairy Queen, Jack in the Box, Taco Bell, and Carl's Jr. Or Hardee's if you live on my end of the country. And apparently they're pretty rare because some of them are listed online for a lot. Hence why I don't have anything to display on the shelf back here. Just looks so empty. And sadly, the show didn't see much in the way of an official release either. There were a few DVDs released in the UK, but that's about it. In 2006, Louis Anderson himself said the show would get a full release in the US, but obviously that never happened. Fortunately, all the episodes were uploaded to YouTube, though the quality isn't great and there are network logos that hopefully won't get me in trouble with the copyright police because I'm too lazy to cover them up this time, but at least you can check them out for yourself if you're interested. Thanks for sharing your life with us, Louie. You know, the heavy subject matter of this show reminded me of another cartoon. One that's super obscure and I thought was lost, but it's something that's kind of personal to me. And I've been meaning to do a review on it, and I think now's the time. I never thought I'd say this about a cartoon clip show episode, but... The next one might get emotional. You know what to do, don't you, Dad? Oh, yeah, I know just what to do. All right, campers, rise and shine. Pack your stuff, hit the road. This arc's going down. Say goodbye to Noah. It's like a lackable, lovable, completely huggable. It's life with Louie.